everybody. Welcome to the Yale Peabody Museum of Natural History. Here we are right now in the Great Hall, which some of you uh, may recognize and some may not because of how it looks right now. Um, and as I promised, we're going to be talking about uh, the Age of Reptiles Mural by Rudolf Salinger. What's interesting is that we are now going uh, through a major renovation of our museum, which will provide 50% more exhibit space and a lot of opportunities for education and outreach. And that means that if we're doing this renovation, we need to protect this mural during construction. And you can see right now this amazing scaffold that Turner Construction has built for us and we call it a working scaffold because it not only protects the mural and i will show you how in a minute it also allows us to work inside the space if we ever need to for example we had some conservators and paintings conservators working up there already and when they were cleaning the mural and doing other uh, preparation work before um, the big construction begins so let's just go and take a look at the mural first floor. We have two different floors because this amazing mural is so big that it requires two levels. Come on in. So here we are inside uh, the first level of the scaffold that is currently protecting the Age of Reptiles mural. This is an absolutely gorgeous mural that we felt that we really, really needed to protect during our renovation. And um, this mural is 110 feet long by 16 feet high. So that's why we need those two levels to be able to um, work up here and uh, monitor the health of the mural while the construction is going. And we have several things going on. One of them that you saw as I was coming in was the light. We don't have all the lights on all the time. We only turn them on while um, we are doing these uh, monitoring and checks of the mural. We also have the structure that is closed, but also we have these windows. So from downstairs, we can see what's going on. We also have security. This is a space that is locked and it has um, cameras. So we are really, really interested in protecting um, this amazing work of art. This mural was painted uh, by Rudolf Salinger from uh, 1943 to 1947. And in 1949, it actually won a Pulitzer Prize because it's absolutely stunning. So we can walk and appreciate um, the actual, absolute beauty of this mural. And you know what? Let's go to the end of the mural so we can start um, some history of life as we walk by. Some people call this mural like the dinosaurs mural or as the title says, the age of reptiles, but actually it starts even before that because we begin um, in the Devonian and then we start moving um, through the Carboniferous and then the Permian. And after that, we go into the Mesozoic, that is when the dinosaurs um, started being so important and reigned the earth. But another thing that I can show you that may seem a little like, what is this thing? Here we have, this is a temperature and relative humidity monitor. So this is another thing that we're monitoring in this space. We have one in this level and one in the upper level as well. And this allows us to know how the environment is in here. And also we have air that is filtered. So the air that is in here is not the same air that is outside during construction. 
Um, another amazing thing about this mural is the amount of detail. So there are so many gorgeous brush strokes that you can appreciate as you uh, come close. And if you're looking at it from below, you can appreciate how gorgeous it is, but it is not as easy to see the amount of detail. Um, when Salinger was painting this mural, he was using, um, first he made a tempera version of it, and then he took some photographs and he uh, did some grids on those photos. And then when this wall was all plastered, he came and he did those same grids on the wall and then started um, drawing from his photos each one of those grids. And so once he finished all that drawing, that's when he started painting. And that's why it took him three and a half years to finish this um, gorgeous project. But I think we should go actually to the upper level so we can see some really, really cool dinosaurs. So we're here in the second level of the scaffold right next to one of my friends, the Brontosaurus. Look at it, it has the most beautiful eyes. Of course, we have no idea how the eyes looked, but to Salinger, this is how they looked, and they are absolutely stunning. And maybe it was not just to Salinger, because one thing that we know about the way that he worked was that he collaborated with curators of the Yale Peabody Museum to um, find the best and more, most realistic way to capture these animals, and also the nature, all the plants that we have in the mural. He talked to curators, and at that time, in the 40s, there was a lot of research being done in paleobotany, and it was a perfect time and perfect opportunity for Salinger to talk to all these curators and start thinking about how the plants looked you know, from what you see in a fossil to what you would have seen if you could have taken the time machine. And of course, the dinosaurs themselves were also a big, big important feature. He wanted to know how the skin was and how um, you can turn those bones into an actual animal. You know, the muscles and um, all the soft tissues are not preserved in these animals. And even though today we look at some of these dinosaurs and we think they are outdated. I don't think that's a good way to look at it. I think this is an amazing capture of how science was telling us uh, dinosaurs and plants looked like um, in the 40s. So nowadays we have also great scientists and curators and other researchers at the Peabody doing amazing research on how these dinosaurs not only looked, but also behaved. And um, I think it's very, very exciting to be able to see science evolve um, from what was in the 40s to what it is right now. And um, so if we consider um, this science aspect as well, Salinger first was tasked to create panels that would go on this wall. But as he started thinking about it, he started thinking that maybe that was not what he was supposed to do. Maybe the idea was that he would create this panorama of life and um, decided to present this new idea that instead of creating these panels, he would paint the whole wall. And this wall was painted um, while the museum was open. So people, visitors were coming in and looking at all these amazing specimens that we had in place, but also they were looking at Salinger while he was working and they were able to ask questions if they had them. And so it was a beautiful experience to anybody that would come to the museum and live uh, the painting of the Age of Reptiles. And so um, another thing that we have down here is our friend the Stegosaurus. He is in a weird spot in the scaffold because um, the floor of this second level is kind of in front of his face, but um, it's one of those amazing skeletons that we had in the Great Hall that inspired um, the all the characters, let's call them, that were going to be in this mural. And so all the cases that were underneath the mural 
that take up those um, 10 feet of space that Zellinger did not paint. Uh, those uh, specimens that were there were inspiring also what he would have captured um, in these walls. And another thing that's really cool to see is that we have these very, very tall trees that go um, all throughout the mural. And what they are doing is they are separating these time periods. So the, the trees not only inform about the nature and how um, plants looked in these different times, but uh, aesthetically, they have the function of separating all these time periods starting in the Devonian and going towards the Cretaceous. So let's look at another friend. And like I promised, this is our T-Rex. It's absolutely amazing. And of course, its eyes are, they just show so much terror. But one cool thing about this mural is that there's no violence. There is one dinosaur eating another, but we don't even know which dinosaur he's eating. So it's not eating anybody's favorite. Um, but we do have a T-Rex. And one thing that I can tell you about this T-Rex is that, first of all, it inspired uh, the design of Godzilla. So this one over here is what created that image of Godzilla. And I am a conservator, and so I see and I look at things. And one thing that I can show you about this T-Rex that I absolutely love is if we look at its teeth, in this area over here, Salinger decided to change his mind and cover some of these teeth. He probably thought it had too many or they were too crowded, and so he covered some of them. So you can see the artist also there. You can not only see the T-Rex, but you can see Salinger's hand, which is something that I absolutely love. And another thing that I see, which is not as happy, but it's what it is, um, it's some of the deterioration that we can see on the skies. The skies are the areas where we can see it more clearly. And unfortunately, that's one of the risks that we can have when working with this fresco seco technique and other uh, murals. But in this case, um, some of this degradation, unfortunately, is from that plaster interacting with the paint and there isn't much we can do. We could paint it over, but that would be um, unethical of us, and we would be covering Salinger's work, and that is not something that we want to do. Because also, when you look at this painting, you can see how thin the paint layer is, and if we start painting things over, or we start doing too much, we lose that beautiful matte texture that um, he decided that was going to be uh, what he wanted to show in this mural. Another star of the mural is this volcano, or actually several volcanoes that we have, because um, if you look at the mural when you're inside the Great Hall, you would think, why is it painted from the right to the left? And it's because the cases uh, were displayed in that way, and you would come into the Great Hall from that door over there and transition into the Mammal Hall on the other side. And so the history of time was best told in this direction. And so why is this volcano here? It's because in the 40s, this was thought to be the reason why dinosaurs were no longer with us, so why they had become extinct. And um, this is another example of how the science continues to evolve, but we still have uh, this history of science shown in this absolutely gorgeous mural. And another thing that's also cool is that if you look at the mural from its beginning to here, you will see some color transitions. You see it start in that very pinkish tone, and that is showing that it was a hot and humid environment. And as we keep progressing, things start clearing up until we come here into the Cretaceous, and then again we have this, um, these clouds and uh, the lava that is in this area as well. So let me show you one last thing 
which is one of my favorite things in the whole mural. Okay, so I have a confession to make. Even though this mural is the age of reptiles, I'm a mammals girl. And so here you can see the only, the one and only mammal that we have in this mural, which Salinger actually painted after the fact. That was not something that he had planned initially. And if you had any doubts that this is a real Salinger mural, we have his signature right here. So this is a stunning work of art that we absolutely love at the Yale Peabody Museum. And we're so, so excited to be able to protect during this renovation that we're going through. And we're actually very excited to be able to give you this tour so you can see the mural from really, really up close, which is something that is a very, very unique opportunity. So thank you so much for joining us and keep enjoying all the tours of spinach.